Hello, my nerdy friends, to another video of Ace Attorney. I still want to be tempted to say welcome back to my Pokemon Black playthrough because I play Black and then Black 2 back to back. So now I'm like in the temptation of wanting to say that. But no, we are in Ace Attorney where we are a lawyer. In the last episode, well, uh, Mia got framed for her sister's death, Maya. Um, Maya was killed um, by some guy in a pink suit. According to what we've been investigating so far, he, he might deal with the name White. So we're in day two, we're in the investigation phase. So, uh, not investigation, trial phase. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial Miss Maya Faye. Prosecution is ready, your honor. The defense is ready, your honor. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your ultimate statement. Thank you, your honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution's evidence that she committed murder. We have witnesses who saw her do it. The prosecution see no reason to doubt the facts of this case, your honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. If we may call our first witness, your honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer of the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office explain. The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as an evidence. I'm still calling it a statue. <laughs> yeah, because it's a clock, but it has none of the clock stuff in it. Now, detective. Y yes, sir. You immediately arrested Maya Faye, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe? Please testify to court this hard evidence. All right, let's let's examine. All right, as soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already: the defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm, the very moment you say. Very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, this is going to be hard to find a contradiction, but we will find it. <laughs> so yes, there will be some kind of slip-up that we need to find. Something the matter. No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. All right. So, I don't think there's any contradiction there. Why we had a witness describing her? Let's press this. Um... And as you guys see, um, I was gonna, I was gonna show that eventually, but yes, your bar goes down. But we're gonna press this. 
because did you guys I don't know if you guys saw any evidence but because or in a, a statement but apparently the witness they had hard evidence on it okay but how did they exactly see her Miss May. Miss May isn't suspicious and sure isn't pink, pal. W well, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um. Yeah. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Alright, so we got a memo that was on a piece of paper beside the body with Maya's name written on it. Yeah, but didn't she die immediately after the blunt object, though? No, I think she was still alive a little bit before, as soon as she got hit by it. <laughs> Gumshoe. All right, we're gonna look at this evidence and see where we're at. Yes, right here. Because according to this, yeah, single blunt four trauma, death was instantaneous, so then she couldn't have wrote it, right? Because she couldn't have wrote that, if that is the case. Sometimes this game throws you like, like wrenches, I swear. There's one thing I want to clarify for, for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That was, that she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey? That really what you are saying? What, what, what? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have it? You have it backwards, detective. B backwards? The detective is... The victim <laughs> is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from the department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. But, no butt in your way out of this one, Detective. Order, order. The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when, when exactly did you obtain that autops autopsy report? But when? Um, yeah, it was the day after the murder. We didn't get the day of. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... <laughs> I like that finger thing he does. <laughs> that autopsy report is outdated, your honor. Well, what? A second autopsy report was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediately due to a blunt object. But there's a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received the results this morning. No way. That's what I mean by it. they throw a wrench into this stuff. <laughs> it's quite easy for you to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. This is all. I see. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? <laughs> um, it would be the detective because he didn't give us the updated report. 
Detective Gumshoes, you are a sham. Detective Gumshoe. Er I'm disappointed in you, handing him the wrong report like that. Eh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. You are at fault, detective. This isn't going to look good on your evaluation next month. But, but... Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. Wouldn't this be like a mistrial then? Because it was like a mess up in like evidence? I don't know. That's just me. Okay, we still think Maya is the killer. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Oh, her. Jeez, her. <laughs> witness, your name, please. April May, at your service. <laughs> I feel like she would be that seductive type who talks like that. Order, an introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Oh, yes, your honor. <laughs> Tell us, where are you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was like in my hotel room, tee -hee. I checked in right after lunch. After this hotel's direct directly across the Fay and Co. law offices. Hmm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court what you saw. It's so hard going back and forth like that. <laughs> I'm just having fun. It was like 9 o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and... and... she hit her! Then the woman with the long hair, she kinda slumped. The end, that's all I saw. Every little fitzy witsy Good God, her her text is so cringy, <laughs> but I love it. Hmm. Well, Your Honor, I see it is quite remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble a witness any. W wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were with Miss Mia Fay's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her carefully way of finding tiny faults and perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examinate the witness? Obviously. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Alright. So there was... Okay. So we don't have any faults here, right? We don't have any time of death on the murder at all. So okay. She saw a long haired woman get attacked. I don't see. So, what we're, do we're just trying to find a contradiction, uh, just for those who are new. Um, and it's just like, we're just trying to figure it out. So, 
I feel like in this statement, we need to press it because we need to find out what she hit her with, what she thinks she hit her with. So let's, let's press that. Huh, what? I, gee, first of all, she had a girl's physique. And, and secondly, she was, she was small. Who else could it be but her? I still want to question her testimony, though. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that... She is lying. And here's why. I know up, to, I know up until the neck, actually the next two cases, um, but I don't know if you guys saw it where the body was in the window in the, the blueprints, but you'll see. Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. That is right. Because she doesn't wear clothes like no one else would normally wear. I mean... However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss Mai? Roar, roar! What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your toast testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, almost had her. I did see everything, I did. The victim, the woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon, I saw it, I did. That, that clock, um, this kind of statuey clock, the thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you, Tiki? And there was a big contradiction in her statement. She said it was a clock, right? In the beginning, the, the clockwork was taken out. How would she have known it was a clock? Because everything was taken out and stuffed the evidence paperwork in. So we are going to press this because it couldn't have rang. <laughs> So we're going to present the statue. And it's okay to make mistakes as you playing this game. I mean, this game is fun. I love this game. For feeling, oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? You just said that the statue the thinker was a clock, but there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Another person in the much same position as you recently called this a clock too, but he was found guilty of murder. Order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Oh. oh. The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that is important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with the trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murders with these questions before. Objection sustained. You may continue the question to witness. Huh? What? So what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That, that's... Because I heard it. 
Yes, I heard it. It say the time. So, you've been to the law offices of Faye and Co. N n no. Hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. Hee <laughs> hee. The law offices of Faye and Co. where the murder took place is very close to the hotel. She could have easily have heard that clock. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I'm not satisfied because it couldn't have wrong. <laughs> Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang because there's nothing in it. <laughs> that clock is missing the clockwork. How could this, how possibly? Just take a look right now. Oh, see anything interesting, your honor? It is the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Mr. Wright, would you care to explain the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. She's just crazy. <laughs> Miss May. She's cute, but she's annoying and crazy. Tis tisk. Quite a show you put on us, Mr. Wright. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty, as you say. It can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock had been emptied after she heard it. That is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? And we can. Because as you, as you guys saw in the beginning, the cell phone call was recorded. And Miss... And Mia and Faye were talking about the thinker and how it was empty. <laughs> the evidence proves that when the clockwork was removed, we have. Da -da. Take a look at this. Hmm. That's a very cute cell phone. Ho oh, ho! You have a girly phone! Wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of the conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention! Perhaps Detective Gumchu overlooked it. <laughs> He's up for evaluations. <laughs> I feel bad for Detective Gumchu though. I like him. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could? Uh, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out, sorry. Your Honor, I think this mistake makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Sorry, I can't read. <laughs> Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. M m m well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that the weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? I saw the clock before. Um, what store was it again? I, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. <clears throat> so the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes, because Larry Butts only made two. 
in the first case, if you guys remember that. The witness claims she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts the piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. And so the sheer fact that Larry Butts custom made these. It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. But what? A friend of mine made this clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. I impossible. Everything is stolen in stores. Miss May, I think it's a high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh, excuse is not on sale today? Oh, 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 mer Gosh. What's it to you, you porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. To die! See, she's crazy. <laughs> she's insane. Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. He. Oh. Oh, oh. S silly me. Did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did, teehee. <laughs> Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how'd you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Yes, your honor. Allow me to explain how the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because you had heard about it. Because remember, we found the um, wiretap. However, she heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, your honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder. Well, we got the wiretap. Have a look at this. Uh, oh, the, the, uh, I found this in Miss May's room. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim Miss Mia Fay's phone, were you not? Oh, oh, oh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. <laughs> it troubles me that we, our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her s phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which is not, you still have one thing to prove. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock. I mean, it's clearly the, the cell phone. Yep. Right. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I, I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. Look, look. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May? Shut up, all of you! What gives you the right to talk to me? You, you lawyer! It, it's not fair. All of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm a bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? Uh, uh, why? 
<laughs> oh, I can't do that. <laughs> Miss May. What is it, you little shrimp? Talk to me in that tone of voice, will you? You killed her, didn't you? Order, order. There will be order. What? How can you possibly say that? Are you mad? All I did was a little wiretapping. Oops. So you admit you tapped her phone. Heh, <laughs> heh. But wait. I didn't do anything bad like murder. I'm a good girl. Really? Can you prove it? You think you are so smart, Mr. Lawyer. But I can prove it, and I will. Can't be serious, no way. Way, I say, way! Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so the killing happened around 9 o'clock at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service on the sweet bellboy. R room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, you know, like a normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have a regular cold coffee. A ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of murder. So I guess we are going to call the bellboy a witness. Shoot. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well... Let's call the bellboy. The defense would like to call the bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunk in, sunk in quite low already. I object to the calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold the wiretap. Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss. April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy. Then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer. Thus, she was innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. This is my condition. We're going to have to accept it if we're going to uh, get this bellboy out of here. Understood. I accept your condition. Hmm. <laughs> Fool. You fell right into my trap. Ah. Uh, very well. The court calls a hotel bellboy to stand. I believe we are ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Gatewater Hotel in the business of for four generations. I believe I received a call after 8 o'clock in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 o'clock on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course, and I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. Oh, I see. The defense may begin its test cross-examination. Cross right, I'm ready. So, definitely want to press her for the time. Um.
Yes, let's press it for this. Precisely 9 o'clock then? Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir. 9 o'clock p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, no boy, tee hee. I'd like a nice coffee at 9 o'clock. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of 9 o'clock, sir. Let's press this. You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you are so certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she, she the guest, sir, favored me with a... An embracer, sir. Embracer? Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir. But not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never forget, sir. It's no good. Tis, tis. Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm. It was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. Wait, please wait. Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. Alright, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question. That's all. Yes, I want to ask about the chicken, because it was two glasses on the table. And that is something we need to look into. You. Oh, all right, very well, sir. My first thought was she was a beautiful person. She's just my type of girl, so it was a disappointment, really. I see. Excuse me, what exactly was a disappointment? Well, I'm not without charm, sir, but even I'd have a little chance with her lover there. What did you say? Ah, rather quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Did Ma Miss May check in with another person? I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Er, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? W well, sir, you didn't ask. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, uh, yes, quite indeed. It was the, er, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention it, if I was specifically asked, sir. Oof. Y you fool. I've done it. I've won. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, yeah, sir. Then when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Hmm. We've just learned another person involved who may have been the murderer. In the light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple, it was. The man who checked in with Miss May. Oof. Your Honor, 
As it had been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet, Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bail boy saw no one else in that room at the time of the murder. But my, what a convenient little setup. But it's too late. Too late. I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of another man in the court. Oof. Upstart amateur. The, the, these accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. Yes, your honor. That is all for today of the trial of Maya Faye. Court is adjourned. It sucks that me up died. Oh. Mr. Wright, you were amazing in there. Really? I think I might be your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sent shivers up my spine. Hm, if you say so. So what happens to me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so, not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? Or they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms that won't work everywhere. She's po probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from close. Yes, sir! I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now I've heard it. I'm not so sure. Most of her trust testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. I don't know how much good this will do to me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. Alright, that concludes this episode of Phoenix Wright. Day 2 of the trial. So now we got um, the, uh, the next, next phase. Day 2 of the investigation. Alright, my nerdy friends. We will be back with day 2 of the investigation. Uh, that was interesting. Um, so we had uh, Miss May on stand. Uh, well, we had Gumshoe, Miss May, and then the bellboy. And the bellboy brought up some light that there was a man that was checked in with Miss May. And um, this man was the possible murder of Mia, which sucks. But we are going to find out and get down to it so we can put this man in jail. Alright, my nerdy friends. If you guys want to support me, please like, comment, subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell as well if you guys want to get notified for any future content I put out. Like always, my nerdy friends, please have a good morning, a good day, and a good night. Peace out, my nerdy friends.